Kyrie Irving was downright crazy to leave LeBron James and turn his back on what would be a fourth straight trip to the NBA Finals. That was the general feeling last August when Irving forced a trade to Boston, remember well, maybe there is a method to Kyrie's perceived madness. Thus far, the trade has been a lopsided victory for the Celtics, who entered Saturday's game in Atlanta riding a 14-game winning streak. Irving embraced the idea of the Celtics being his team, which is an indirect way of saying I'm tired of being in LeBron's shadow. And that was before Gordon Hayward suffered a horrific leg injury five minutes into the season opener. Irving cried as Hayward was being stretched out of the arena that night, but after Boston lost its home opener the Celtics began their improbable winning streak. They even won the game Irving missed after suffering a facial fracture. He made a basketball move, Kevin Durant said of Irving. And that's the most respected move is to keep it at ball. So he's playing his best basketball. He's stepped into a leadership role and this team has taken off because of him. Second-year guard Jalen Brown has been a revelation while Jason Tatum may be the best rookie in the 2017 class. Ben Simmons, the presumptive rookie of the year, was drafted a year earlier. Mad Meyer GT images the Celtics traded a solid 12-way guard Avery Bradley to Detroit last summer but they've become a better defensive team under head coach Brad Stevens. Boston's league-leading defense is giving up 95.4 points per 100 possessions. Hayward will eventually come back and Boston still has assets to improve in the near future. The Atlantic division is suddenly loaded with young, promising teams. In theory, Cleveland made a solid deal, especially considering Irving's trade demand became public. The Cavs received a 2018 first-round pick via the Brooklyn Nets, Jay Crowder and Isaiah Thomas, who is sidelined until at least January with a hip injury. For now, the trade is the main reason why Cleveland has struggled. Until further notice the Cavs essentially swapped one of the league's best point guards for Crowder. Cleveland needs Thomas healthy and productive to push the Warriors and the Celtics for that matter. The Celtics' DIDNT play their best game on Thursday against Golden State yet they still defeated the defending champs 9,288. Boston's length on the perimeter causes problems. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson scored a combined 22 points on 8 for 32 shooting. The Celtics overcame a 17-point deficit which is no small feat. Over the last three seasons, the Warriors were 18-42 in games where they held a lead of 15 or more points. Irving's shot was off but with the help of a late phantom foul he did convert seven free throws in the final 355. Mad Meyer GT images we haven't played well enough to consider this win streak to be valid in my opinion, Stevens said Saturday morning. We've figured out ways to win games. We gotta play a lot better. LeBron admitted that he had the game featuring his former point guard and his arch-rivals but he wasn't crazy about offering an analysis of the best two teams in the NBA. Ha James said after scoring 39 points in 46 minutes against the Clippers on Friday. You want me to comment on that nah? I've got too much to worry about around here right now trying to get our ship going in the right direction. I had the game Thursday night. It was an Eastern Conference game. There's not. Many times you see Golden State not going in the 120s. Boston just had a good tempo about the game. Neither team could really make those shots. It was a free throw game in the fourth quarter. But I'm not going to. I don't pay attention to too much of what's going on besides their record and things they've been doing. But they're playing some good ball right now. Ball game this was the week ENE's canter ran into the fire while Lonzo Ball became the NBA's most famous conscientious objector by casually walking away from a minor skirmish between the Lakers and Suns late Friday. To be or not to be the third man in, that is the question. It was either the late, great enforcer Maurice Lucas or Charles Oakley who once first said that. The answer is this case is both Cantor and LeVar's oldest son acted appropriately. Cantor was rushing to defend a rookie teammate, Frank Nelakina, and ended up nose-to-nose -nose with LeBron. It was a unifying moment for a young, unproven team. That was clearly the motive behind Cantor's actions and words. The garden crowd ate it up. But there is another reason why Cantor was so brave to stand up to an imposing player like LeBron. And that is best explained by Ball, who was asked why he walked away from the scrum. It's the NBA, he said. People ain't really going to fight. 
If only Lonzo's jump shot was this accurate. The NBA essentially legislated fighting out of the game. There will be an occasional fight but the moments like the all-out brawl between the Knicks and Nuggets a decade ago have become obsolete. Assistant coaches and bench players instinctively spread their arms to form a barrier to prevent anyone from leaving the bench and thus avoiding a suspension. Thank you, we won't see anything remotely close to the punch Kermit Washington threw in 1977 that nearly killed Rudy Tomjanovich. LeBron cares too much about his image and his money while why understanding his importance to his team. He's not going to compromise the Cavs and his bank account by punching his way into a 510-game ban. Cantor knows that but his response was an important symbolic gesture. Ball put himself in a position to be questioned by his teammates. However, his game and attitude is all about putting the team first. It's his loudmouth father, LeVar, who placed the bullseye on Lonzo's back and that's unfortunate. Lonzo has struggled in his first month. He's shooting just 30% from the field and 23% on 3S. His poor performances led to being benched in the fourth quarter of two games last week. He's our starting point guard, said Lakers coach Luke Walton. There's no talks as of now of moving Lonzo to the bench, he's our starting point guard. Being Frank Carmelo Anthony is averaging 20.1 points for OKC, which is 78 overall and 27 versus the Western Conference. Former Nick David Lee attended the wedding of the year this week. Lee is engaged to tennis player Caroline Wozniacki, a BFF of Serena Williams who married Reddit co-founder Alexis Ahanian in New Orleans. Carmelo's wife Lala also attended. The president should have insisted that China keep LeVar Ball for a few months.